Good evening, my name is Cole Smith. This is Steve McCaslin. And today, we're talking about business plans. Thanks for tuning in to Lecture Hall today. I have Steve with us, and today we're gonna to talk about what is a business plan, why is a business plan important, and how can you implement your values into your business plan. So let's go ahead and get started. At all this anyway. Yep. Okay. Well, am I supposed to look at you or the camera? Both. Okay. Most. So I got asked a question in an interview one time. Tell me about yourself. It's in a common interview question you get from someone if they're, especially if they're a professional interviewer. Tell me about yourself. So I said, I studied chickens, flew jets, sold software. Now I sell people, and I got the job. So the guy asked me the question, why? What? What? What does that all mean? None of it's related. And it meant that I can do whatever it is you want me to do because I'll learn how to do it and I'll learn how to do it fast. So that was how I answered that question. But what I am, through all of that, through all that experience, I spent a career in the Navy flying in the A6 Intruder. I uh, spent about the last 24 and a half years or more, a little bit over, uh, in the corporate world now as an executive level business and leadership professional. Um, I've had leadership experience in the government, in the corporate world, in private, non, in the non, non-profit sectors. And for the last 10 years, until the beginning of this year when I started working for the city, I had my own business consulting company, which business plans was a lot of one of the things that I talked about. And I did business consulting, leadership development, training, coaching, executive coaching, all that, and corporate training. And as I said, in January, I took a role with the city here as their economic development coordinator. Like, what is a business plan and what is a SWOT analysis? Okay. In its simplest form, a business plan is really a blueprint or a roadmap for how you're going to achieve the goals for your business, for yourself. I mean, you can have it, but it really doesn't. It can be your organization within a business that you're gonna do. And basically what it does, it can do and should do, is provide useful information for you and guidance at each stage of your business. Your business plan should adapt as your business adapts to things and grows out there. A SWOT, on the other hand, is more really an in-depth analysis. In-depth analysis. So what you're gonna look at in a SWOT are, really you're gonna be getting into strengths, weaknesses, of your business. You can do a personal SWAT too. I've done a lot of personal SWATs. Um, But it's a great technique for identifying and understanding what those strengths and weaknesses are. And then you take a look at external opportunities. It could be a shift in technology. It could be anything. How do you adapt to that? How can you turn that into an opportunity? And then you want to look at threats. So that's the SWOT, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. So that you now have an idea of how, and actually it feeds into a business plan, but you now have this idea on how you want to take what you're trying to do, understand what you're good at, understand what you're not good at, strengthen the things you're not good at, be able to look out there, because one of the things in business that you have to be able to do, or in anything in life, is see how the tea leaves are gonna start reading and see what the trends are that are coming. And then once you can do that, that's the opportunities part, but you also wanna know what's coming that could hurt me. Anything that can hurt your business would be a threat. And that could be, it's usually external, but it can be internal, but external could be legislation that's coming that's gonna, a, a pandemic. Most definitely. So I just wanna, I learned uh, under SWAT that strength and weaknesses are internal mm-hmm. and opportunity and threats are external. Is that true? Can there be some leniency to that? I yes. think you just answered that. Yes. Actually. Yes, and I've, I've, there are a lot of people out there who follow that. And, and when you look it up in, in the you know, Wikipedia or whatever, you look up on the web and you find something or in a business book for college, it'll say that. But in truth, in my experience, and I, I'll guarantee you, um, in all of my jobs, we had to do SWATs on every opportunity we had. Okay. So I've got well over 500 SWATs done. A lot of them are real simple. They're not quite as in-depth, but a lot of them are in-depth. And so what happens is that when you're looking at opportunities and when you're looking at threats, 
opportunities could be the sale or the acquisition of another company. I'm gonna sell off a business unit. A threat to you could be if you sell off part of your company. So it can be internal uh, as well. Yeah, so, but gener generally though, I think, I, w I would probably say the vast majority of time, opportunities and threats are external. Are external, okay. Thanks for sharing that. Consider. Oh, well that de really depends on a lot of things out there. I, I put four things that I think are really important out there. First off, it has to be realistic. Realistic. So if it's not realistic, then you're gonna be chasing your tail and, and you just won't get anyway. So what you wanna do is your plan has to show you this blueprint on how you wanna achieve the goals, but the goals have to be not overstated in the plan, meaning realistic out there. Next, don't make it complicated. Start with a basic plan. Basic plan. And then, especially if you're an entrepreneur and you're starting up a business, start with something that just gets you going. It doesn't, ha as long as you've got something and you're using it, you're ahead of probably 80% of the people out there who don't, because I, I know this, because a lot, and I'm not even talking young entrepreneurs, I'm talking about big mid sized companies, you know, in the, you know, tens of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue coming in that don't have a business plan. But, but they've gotten where they've gotten without it, but in my mind, I'm wondering how much farther they could be had they had one. But again, they seem to be okay. You want it to be brief. If you're writing a business plan that reads like war and peace, okay. then, then, you're not, then you're not gonna use it. It, it becomes too complicated. And then you gotta know who your audience is. That's why most places, and I did for my own consulting company, I mean, my business plan for me was for me, but I had one in case I wanted to go get funding, you know, go out and get okay. you yes. know, capital investment or get a loan or, or get people to buy into it. But you need to know if you're doing it for your employees, it doesn't have to be, you can take your big master business plan that covers everything. And then what you can do is go, now, oh, what don't they care about? My employees don't care about a lot of these things here. They, don't, they, don't, they may not care about what's my deliver, what's my distribution method, what's this. They care about what is their role in it and what can they do to help make it successful. So you can pare it way down to give it to them. But if you're gonna go for investment um, or you're gonna go for a loan, then it has to be way more detailed because those people wanna know what are, they wanna know, one, can you do this? Or at least get the belief that you can do it. And the second thing that they're going to be, or, or another thing, not necessarily a second thing, but another thing that they're going to be looking for is how are they going to get their money back? Because when someone, when a bank gives you a loan, they want their money back with interest. Okay. Have you driven across the country or made a long road trip? I have. Yes, personally, I have. Yeah. Did you plan it? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. W would you have done it without a plan? Not the first time. Not the first time. No. Even the second time. So if, if you were to get up tomorrow morning and decide, I'm going to drive to Georgia today. Yeah, it wouldn't happen. Okay. Yeah. And that's exactly why it's important. If you, when you have a business, whether you're starting it or you're running it, what you get with a business plan is a dramatic increase in the chance you're going to succeed. A dramatic increase in chance I'm going to succeed. That's right. There are, just like your road trip, look at all the moving parts. I've got to get gas. I've got to eat food. I've got to, I've got to, oh, what happens if I get stuck somewhere? What happens if, where am I going to sleep? What am I going to do that? So there are a lot of moving parts. Most definitely. So you, you got to, and you, well, you, you can't even plan on all of them a lot of times, but at least if you've got most of them planned for when something comes up that's a, a one-off, then it's really not that hard to deal with or at least you don't have to worry about the other things compounding it is really the thing. Okay. So just like driving across the country is a dynamic evolution, running a business is a dynamic evolution. And Most if you're not, if you don't have a plan for it, then it won't work. And if your plan isn't as dynamic and as adaptable, then that's going to be bad. They serve a lot of purposes though. It can test, if you're starting up a company, it can test the viability of it. Test the viability. So if you're like, especially if you're going to go to venture capitalists, they're going to want to know the viability of what, what it is you're doing. It, it doesn't matter what you're going, it doesn't matter whether you're going to donors, um, for, for those in the nonprofit world, 
you're going to venture capitalists, or you're going to get a loan from a bank. They want to know, I've got this great idea, but they need to know, is it viable out there? It, it really gives you their best chancing, best chancing, best chance of success out there. So, the mo but I will say the most important thing about any business plan you do is that you build one that you use. I've, I, know, I know because when I was doing it for like every year in sales or every year in business development, every year in anything I had, I had to, here's my, here's my plan for the year, boss. And at first, it was great. It was a great exercise. I learned a lot, but it went into a file folder in a drawer and came out as a template for the next year because I started working on the things that were important. But then once I started using it and sticking to what my plan was, my success started to go up. I don't know about exponentially, but it started to get better. At least then, when they asked me, well, what about this? At least I had an answer. Okay, had an answer. Most definitely, for things such as, what happens if this happens? Or how are you going to get the funds to accomplish this? Or right. when and how much, is, you know, when am I gonna get my return back? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Is one, what is one piece of action <laughs> that people can take today to improve their lives or improve their business? There are way, way, way gazillion good answers to that. And I think part of it depends on who you are and where you are. But I will tell you, one of the things I would recommend is what I talk about in one of my Leadership Academy courses, Essentials of Self-Leadership. And that has become better. If you're, lead, if you're running a business, you're leading a business. If you have one employee, you're a leader. If you have a whole bunch of employees or you have a highly structured organization and you're somewhere not on the lower level, then you're in a leadership role. And even if you're in the lower level, this is important because it's gonna help you in your life and it's gonna help you both personally and professionally. And that is to become better at leading yourself, which is really around becoming more self-aware. Self-awareness is one, of, and so I learned this when I took a course on self-leadership, which I have now, which I now teach, a, a, a pared-down version of it, because I do only the essentials part of it. But a key part of being able to lead yourself is to be self-aware, and what that is is this ability to perceive who you are realistically and clearly through honest introspection, self-observation, if you will. It's a process of self-reflection, self-growth, and through all that, it'll enable you to make the needed changes to the things that you know. When you go back to SWATs, you have strengths, weaknesses. When you're looking at the things that are on your weaknesses side as you're going through this, okay, it's one thing to understand that you have it and accept it. It's another thing to do something about it. Okay. So once you do that, then you will become better at leading you. And when okay. you can lead you better, then you're going to lead other people better. It's the starting point. This self-observation is really the starting point for all this because you have to do it honestly. And to do it, you have to be able to see what, when, why, and under what circumstances you do what you do. How, why do I react the way I do? And then when you go through this process, which can be very eye-opening and somewhat uncomfortable sometimes, because no one really wants, everyone wants to think that I've got my life in order. And for the most part, you probably do. But I, will, uh, I say this in almost every leadership course I teach. If you don't stop learning, if you don't stop getting better at what you do, you're gonna fall back. I think there was a Confucius saying, rowing up uh, life, uh, learning is like rowing upstream, not to advance is to fall back. You know, you'll so sort of type of thing. Okay. So you identify the good behaviors in this self-observation, the things you wanna keep, and then you identify the things that you wanna change. And whenever you do that, you're gonna get better at what you do. Because there's one thing, the last thing I'm gonna say on this, there's one single constant in everything you do. Have any idea what that is? One single constant in everything that I do. No, sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't get enough of that. You. You are the one constant in all the actions you take because you're the one taking them. So whenever you have more understanding of who you are and why you do the things you do, you can strengthen the things you're good at 
and you can work on the things that need work on and then you'll be able to better lead yourself and then while well, if you don't you can still be an, a leader but you will not be as effective a leader as you can be if you can't lead yourself effectively won't be as effective if i can't lead myself fantastic steve is there anything else you want to add for for the class today no i don't have anything else uh, just go out and do it. Doing something is better than not doing something. So if we're back to business plans, have a plan. A plan is having a plan dramatically increases the chances that you're going to get somewhere, at least get moving on it and then adapt to it. Just like that road trip, you know, you might get a flat tire and, and slow you down, but at least you have a plan for it. Most definitely. Steve, I really, really appreciate our time today. I, for me, you are someone that I look up to. I strive to have the, the mentality and when I grow older, I want to be able to lead people just like you're able to lead people. So I just want to say I'm super thankful to have you as a guest on Lecture Hall today. And I really hope that people who are watching can take something extremely, extremely valuable out of this. I'm ready to go revise my business plan now. Thank you so much. <laughs> have a great one. Consider downloading your free home buying brochure. Let's schedule a call. Steve, do you sell any of your stuff online or? Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. But it's going to be coming online soon. I, I have 28 courses in my Leadership Academy. and. I'm hoping that within the next year I start uh, with this new job that I took mm -hmm. uh, to help the city out, uh, that now I can have the, more time to put that stuff together and then put it out there. When it gets out there, I'll let you know. Thank you guys so much. Have a great night. Have a Thank great you. one.